Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our course on evaluating the IELTS writing section. I'm Adam. This is video number two of our mini course, and we're going to look at the grammatical range and accuracy criterion today. So in the last video, we had a little bit of an introduction to the writing section and how to evaluate it and what to consider in when you're evaluating it. And we've had a holistic look at the scoring of the, re of the writing section. But it's very important to understand that in order to be able to do a holistic reading, first you need to understand the individual parts. Once you understand the individual criteria, then you can put them all together to see how they work one with the other. Okay? So today we're going to look at one of them. We're going to look at grammatical range and accuracy, basically grammar. And we're going to see how these things uh, affect your score, how these elements affect your writing score. So first of all, we're going to look at the public score descriptors. These are the ones available on the IELTS website. I just want to look at a few of them as an example. So band 9, to get a band 9, you have to use a wide range of structures with full flexibility and accuracy. Rare minor errors occur only as slips. In other words, you basically have to be perfect with your grammar. You can have a few mistakes here and there that are accidental, but otherwise you have full control, full variety, you're very natural and very comfortable with the grammar. And you'll notice that as you go down in bands, the number of errors allowed goes uh, up. Like you have more errors, but your score goes down. So you still need a wide range of structures to get the eight. But now it's just the majority of sentences are error free. So now you have more mistakes allowed. But if most of the sentences have mistakes, you're obviously going to go down in score. Makes only very occasional errors or inappropriacies. So again, more mistakes, but lower score. Now, what's very important to notice here, and this is why I think a lot of people have problems, this doesn't actually tell you what they're looking at. Based on this scoring descriptor that's available publicly, you don't know what they're looking for in terms of grammar, in terms of structures, in terms of complex structures, complex sentences. Are they looking at articles and prepositions? Are they looking at syntax? Are they looking at how you use pronouns? Of course they are, but you don't know what mistakes they're focusing on, which is why I made this video to give you a better idea of what they're actually looking at. And again, band seven, score goes down. Now you're using a variety, not a wide range, just a variety. So you're not only using adjective clauses with which. You're not only using adverb clauses with because or if. You're trying to mix up the structures as much as you possibly can and you can make a few more errors, but you have good control of grammar and punctuation. Not great, but good. Better than a six, which is obviously a little bit less control. So as you go down in band score, the mistakes go up in terms of frequency and severity, like how big the mistakes are, how distracting they are, okay? So a, a little bit closer look. This criterion, GRA, measures your grasp of the technical, mechanical, and structural rules of the language. Basically, you need to know how English works, how to put words together, how to put sentences together. Grammar skills, a variety of structures, efficiently employed in context, etc. Things have to not only work grammatically, they have to work in relation to what's around them as well. Accuracy measures the quality of the writing. So how accurately are the various grammatical features used? Like, are you using them correctly, appropriately? Are words placed in the correct area of the sentence or in relation to other words, etc.? While range refers to the quantity of features that you use naturally and effectively. So accuracy, how correct, range, how many you're using. So there are also some things you need to consider for both accuracy and for range. And these are just some of the highlights. If you want to get more details, more highlights, more uh, focused uh, ideas of what they're looking for, all of that is in my book, 
you can get an ebook or a print book. You can go to my website to get more details about that. There's a link up here. But I'll give you some examples to give you an idea of what sorts of things they're looking at. Now, before we get to the examples, also consider some of the questions they're asking, the examiners are asking. Is the writer familiar with basic grammar rules and functions? For example, do you know how to make a subject and a verb agree? This is a very basic part of grammar. If, you, if your subjects and verbs don't agree, you're going to lose points. Does the writer demonstrate sufficient variety and competency in sentence structures in terms of complexity and degree of difficulty? Again, if all your complex sentences are adjective clause with which, okay, you have a complex sentence, but it's not really much variety. There's noun clauses, adverb clauses, different types of noun, adverb, and adjective clauses. There are mixed clauses, embedded clauses, all kinds of different structures that they want to see you using. Are sentences constructed naturally or do they appear forced? Now, you might not think that it's easy for the examiner to understand if you're forcing something in, but they do understand. If you're using an inverted sentence, like you're using not only do they, inverting the subject and verb, there's got to be a reason for your using that particular structure in that particular part of your writing. If you're doing it just to use it, the examiners understand this and you're actually losing points, not gaining points, especially if you make a mistake while doing so. So the next question essentially is similar to the one just before. Are you using variety of complex structures? Are you using also causatives? Are you using passives for a particular reason? not just to use it. Are you using different clauses and mixes and different phrases and all these things? And do you use punctuation correctly? Do you throw in a comma just to have a comma? Do you put a semicolon to try to impress the readers, but that semicolon doesn't need to be there? All of these things affect your score, okay? Now, another thing you have to consider is some of the main reasons for losing points. Frequent errors in basic grammatical features. If you have one mistake, two mistakes, not a problem. If you have one, only one type of mistakes, like only articles, you know, maybe they'll take off a little bit, like a half band for that. But if you have a lot of little mistakes, those, all those little mistakes add up to more points lost, to like a full band lost. They're not going to take off points for every mistake. They're going to take off points collectively for all the basic mistakes. Verbs. Verbs are very, very important. Are you using the right tense, the right form? Are you agreeing with the subject or agreeing with what else comes next to it? If you're using a transitive verb, do you have an object, a direct object for that transitive verb, etc.? Syntax. Where you place words in a sentence affects the meaning of the sentence or affects the stress or emphasis or effect of the sentence. So you have to know where to place words. And again, complexity. If you have too many simple sentences, you're losing points. Too many complex ones, you're trying to force something. And you also have to understand that a simple sentence can be very long and a complex sentence can be very short. So don't misunderstand, don't confuse complexity with length. Things like that. And there obviously there are other reasons for losing points, but uh, you'll see some in the examples as well. And again, the most important thing you need to understand is do these mistakes, do these problems with your grammar affect a reader's ability to understand your message? So if you're making grammar mistakes and I can't understand the argument because of it or the example or the support, that means you're losing also points, not only for the grammar, but also for the task response criterion, okay? So that's the holistic part of it. But if you're only gonna remember one thing about grammar, this is the main thing to remember. Do not distract the reader. If I need to stop to try to figure out what you're saying, you're losing points. Very important. Let's look at some examples. However, with the discover of replacement in the vegetal kingdom, it seems to starting to decrease the dependence of meat as a crucial item in nutrition. 
syntax problems, verb problems, pronoun problems, all kinds of things that don't really work, right? With the discovery part of speech, not discover, verb, discovery, noun. Replacement, obviously not uh, spelled correctly. It seems to starting. First of all, what is it? I'm not sure what it refers to. That's also a cohesion and coherence problem. It's starting to decrease the dependence of meat. So I'm not sure who or what is decreasing or what's going on here. If I fix it, however, with the discovery of replacements in the vegetal kingdom, the dependence on meat as a crucial item in nutrition seems to be decreasing. How you arrange your words has a lot of impact on the message. In task one, in the summary, make sure you don't put a comma for numbers when you should be putting a period, not 1 comma 5, 1 point 5 million, not millions. In 1999, and ex jumped exactly four times instead of exactly twice more. First of all, make sure your information is actually correct. It's not twice more, it's four times more, but also the placement, exactly twice more doesn't work at the end of the sentence because I'm not sure what it's supposed to connect to, right? So look at the way it's fixed. Here's another example. Every child deserves to get attentions. Attention is a non-countable noun, no s, from their parents as it builds stronger family bonds and is good for their emotional health. Now, every child and parents, their emotional health, their can only go with parents. But probably this person meant the emotional health of the child, which is singular. Make sure your pronouns agree, okay? Very common mistake. Jack Ma, CEO of a renowned Alibaba company, once indicated how disturbed he had been after he became a billionaire. Billionaire. Had been before, right? Ha after he became a billionaire, you're talking about the next step. That should be a simple... Uh, verb, simple past verb, so uh, disturbed he was after he became. Canada is bigger than China, but China's population is bigger than Canada. You can't compare population with a geographical space. You can compare China's population to Canada's population. China's landmass to Canada's landmass, but don't mix the two. Okay, I'm giving you, I'm just throwing out a lot of different samples here because these are all very common mistakes that people make that add up to points lost. Almost everyone who regularly eats this kind of food would gain weight. If this is a, you're stating a fact that this is, happens regularly, everyone gains weight because it's a fact. So you want to use a simple present. After increased markedly and reached 40 million tons in 2002, this is not a sentence. There is no subject and verb. This is a sentence fragment. A very common mistake. Also, run on sentences. Very common mistakes that people make. Make sure you know the basic structure of a clause, of a sentence. Okay? And again, throwing, I'll give you a few more examples here. You can look at these individually. I want to look at the second one. Learning a new language always is a challenge. Learning a new language is always a challenge. You notice that these two sentences look almost the same. But learning a new language always means your whole life learning new language, new language. By the time you're 60 years old, you probably know like 15 or 20 languages. But learning a new language is always means every time you try, it's difficult. Very different meanings between the two sentences. And all I did was move one word over, before the verb or after the verb. Pay attention to all of these things. You can press pause and look at all these examples to get a better understanding of what I'm talking about. But again, the most effective way to learn about grammar and vocab and all of these things is to see them in actual samples. And again, that is what the book is about. Every sample, all 40 samples in the book have a very detailed editing process. Every grammar mistake is fixed. Every vocabulary issue is addressed. Every organization or content issue is looked at. So if you want to get more of these examples and study a little bit better how the holistic scoring works, 
you can go and get this book and study from there and work on your own uh, samples as well. Okay? Now, if you have any questions about grammatical range and accuracy, you can ask in the YouTube comment section and come back in the next video. We're going to talk about the lexical resource criterion, vocabulary. Okay? See you then. Bye-bye.